All right, so today we're going to talk about all the basic terms of geometry, and to start at the top, it's the undefined terms, and we use these undefined terms to uh, form our definitions, okay, in the next part of the page. So undefined terms, okay, they have no formal definition, but we can all agree on what they mean, okay? So there's an agreement on their meaning. The first row, an exact location in space, it has no length, width, or thickness. That's point, line, or plane. Yep, point. When we draw a point, again, it's just a dot with a capital letter, you'll, you can write the answer or use it in an answer by writing out the word point in the letter or P. So if it talks about A, B, and C in a question, that's referring to points or your vertices A, B, and C when you're talking about a polygon. The next row, an infinite set of points forming a straight path with only one dimension, length, is a line. The notation for line, when you actually draw a line, you need at least two points. So I'm going to use the points A and B. And with the proper notation, we have the two capital letters with an arrow over the top. Now I can write this as line AB, but I can also write it as line BA. It's the same thing. Okay, and if you have more than two points on the line, you can name the line with any two points. Okay, the third row, an infinite set of points forming a flat surface, which many of you got in the warm-up activity, which was good. It has no thickness, but it does extend infinitely forever. Your desktop, a piece of paper, the walls of a classroom, all represent a plane, but by true definition are not because a plane extends infinitely forever in your two dimensions. Now when I draw a plane, I draw a parallelogram. A plane is named by three points on the plane. So I can have plane P, Q, R. It's also named by one capital letter it's usually in a different font, and you may see it on a, uh, the back of the note page. So I'm going to put an S up here at an, in a script. I can also name this plain S. Again, with the prefix co, root word, line, collinear points are points that lie on the same line. So in our picture to the right, that would be the points A, B, and D. Take that off. Coplanar points are points that lie in the same plane. So that would be P, Q, and R. So again, our defined terms are terms that we describe using words such as point, line, or plane. So when I go to define line segment, for instance, array, angle, those are three terms. If you can place them in the following rows, there's four rows there, so you're going to have one that's blank. Okay. Um, so for line segment, ray and angle, which row is for the line segment? And by definition, a line segment is part of a line consisting of two endpoints. So if you were to draw it, I'm going to call this line segment PQ. Okay, it has two endpoints and it consists of all the points between them. And you can call the line segment PQ. And again, it's also correct to name it QP. 
the order of the letters doesn't matter. With the next one, part of a line that starts at an end point and extends infinitely in one direction. Okay, that's your ray. With a ray, okay, you can again, you have to name it so the symbol is this. And whatever point here is the end point, so let's call this X. That has to be the letter on the left. And it goes through, say, Y. So this is ray X, Y. If you also had, say, P here, you could call it ray X, P. It goes through both of those points. You just can't say ray PX because P is not the end point. Okay? The next row is not, okay, the angle. However, two rays that have a common end point that form a straight line, that is an angle. That's a straight angle. It measures 180 degrees. But as far as the definition is concerned, this properly describes an angle. The union of two rays, well, we have that above here. Okay, here's the union. They come together at that point, and the end point's called a vertex. Okay, so an angle. Here, we name it with three letters, and when you name it, the vertex has to be in the center. Later on, when we do proofs, and we're always looking for a shorter way to write things, you can number your angle, so when you're referring to them in a proof, you can refer it or refer to it as angle one. And then the row above it, again, we talked about this still being a straight angle, which is 180 degrees, yes, but this specifically, the name for the two rays that have a common endpoint that does form a line, those are called opposite rays. So if I put three letters on here, and let's call this C, P, and A, the opposite rays would be endpoint PC, so starting at P, going through C, and PA. All right, down below here where we're looking at the intersection, uh, it was noted, again, in the warm-up activity that when two lines intersect, they intersect in a point. What about two planes? How would you describe, they don't just meet in one point, okay? They touch, if I just kind of make, it looks like they touch here and here and here. They touch multiple places. So how would you describe the intersection? A line. That is correct. So we sketch a line. If you look at one corner to the other, you can draw a straight line right through it. By definition, again, planes extend infinitely, so you'd have your line. Sometimes it's referred to as a line segment. And then the intersection for a plane and a line is a, how many times do they touch? Once, and that is a point. Typically, it might be hard to see on your note page, but they put the dotted line to show that's either underneath the plane in this case. So the intersection here is a point. So going back to the definition, all intersection is, is the set of points, again, they're infinite number of points. Points make up a line by definition. Set of points, the figures have in common. So postulates in geometry are also called axioms. And we'll talk more about postulates and axioms when we start the next unit because we're going to look at a few uh, basic and short proofs, okay, starting unit number two. And these are just simply assumptions. They're statements, again, agreed by everyone to be correct. So the first blank, 
through any two points, if you want to draw it, there exists one and only one line connecting those two points. If you have a line for the next one and then a point off the line, how many lines can go through that one point? Well, here's one, two, three. How many can I draw? What's that? Infinitely many. So through any one point, there are infinitely many lines through that one point. Bullet number three, through any three non-collinear points. I'm going to pause one plane. If two points lie in a plane, so if I have a plane, I don't know how good you guys are at sketching. So here's my plane. If I have two points that lie in the plane, then the line containing those points is also going to be in the plane. The last three, two lines in the same plane. So again, if I have two lines in the same plane, they can be parallel. And it might have uh, stumped you because the line is so short. I use the symbol for parallel, which is two vertical lines. Or if they're not parallel, then they're going to intersect. So here's the orange and green. Whether they intersect at a 90 degree angle, okay? or not at a 90 degree angle, they still intersect. Um, two lines the same one are either parallel or intersect in a, so they intersect in a point. The next one, if two planes intersect, then their intersection is from the previous page a line. If a plane and a line intersect, then their intersection is a point. So I'm going to give you about three to four minutes to quickly look at those questions to kind of, and then we'll go through the answers. And then we're going to skip to the back. So we're going to skip example number two. All right, example number one. And if you have highlighters, it's good to highlight or at least mark up the picture. Um, and if you are using a pencil, you can always erase. So if I'm looking at E or E, F, so E is here, F, G, and H. Are they coplanar? Ryan, is that true or false? So given the statement that they are coplanar, is that true or false? True. And again, because E and G are on the same line, they're on the intersection, it's E and H that are on two different planes, so this is false. The next one, G, J, and F. G, J, and F. Are they collinear, Nick? True. He's already using his true and false cards. That was for the next activity, but if you want to use them now, you can. So this is true is right. Now, from here up at the board, I can't tell. I think the first one is plain S, but I can't tell if that's a J, F, or T. Is it T? It's a J to some. It's a T to some. Does it look like an F? Um, but the point is, is do the two planes, do they intersect in line L? Kaylee or Kaylee? True is right. Grabbing a different color, we have angle HJF that lies in this plane right here. Again, depending on whether we think that's a T, an S, or a J, we've got angle H, J, F. All right, so D is false, and then the last one, E, J, G, and J, F are opposite rays. Now, they do share the same endpoint, so J, G, and J, F, they do share the end, same endpoint, J. Are they opposite rays? Brian? True. True is correct, because they form a straight line, so this is 
true. All right, let's move to, the, again, we skipped number two. I'll come back and give you the answers if you'd like them. Number three, this came from a state test. It deals with a rectangular prism. And earlier I used a box of tissues. So in the diagram to the right, which pair of edges are segments of lines that are not coplanar? So we're looking at edges. So when we think of a rectangular prism, you can think of each face, so there's six faces as a plane. So here's, a, for a visual within the classroom, here's a tissue box. So which of the following edges are segments of lines that are not coplanar? Again, in question number, or answer choice three, segments NO and RQ, when you actually, I know the plane doesn't exist, but you can insert a plane within the solid because those segments are parallel, that would connect the two. So the correct answer is not coplanar number four. Answer choice or answer to number four, what is another name for plane P? So P is the letter off in the corner. We can name a plane based on this letter and it looks like it is in a different font, or with three points that are non-collinear. So it gets rid of these two. So which of the following points are non-collinear? Is it G, C, and E, or G, F, and E? Here's G, C, E. That's along a straight line, so that shouldn't, the other answer choice, number four, should work. G, F, and E, those are non-collinear. So four is the correct answer choice. And to finish with number five, I'm going to go through how I would draw this. If we have some time at the end, I'll have you actually practice just so I can finish the notes. Sketch the figure described, one line that lies in the plane, so I would draw the plane first. And I'm going to draw, it just has to be anywhere in the plane. I'll even name my plane Q, line X, Y. You don't have to. So in orange, here's the one line that is in the plane. And then the other line that does not lie in the plane, meaning completely lie in the plane, I could draw it horizontally above. Okay, so it's parallel. That would work. Um, I could also draw it and put dotted lines to show it's going behind. That line does not lie in the plane either. The only point that does that's on the line is right here. So you can draw it either way. You can have the line being parallel to the plane outside the plane or someone earlier drew it vertically but off to the side. That would work too or you can have it intersect once. When it says it lies in the plane that means it's completely in the plane.